So welcome back everyone, it's Thursday morning. Let's get back on the Homestead Carpenters bench. Okay, so these six brackets I've been working on, these are, are going to be the, uh, uh, the braces. They're going to come down. So this is going to go just like this. So the countertop will be up here. And then this will come down uh, with a, what we call a bird's mouth to the ledger. And what that looks like, if you could imagine that lower ledger we put on against the wall, it'll go in there. You can see kind of how the, the it's got a, you picture it uh, gone, kind of a bird's mouth there. Kind of like, like that. So that will sit down in there. It's going to be really strong. So it'll be just, it'll look just like, if I can hold this for you here, just like this, right there. Nice, huh? A little flat on the bottom. So we're going to glue these together because we want these to be super strong. Uh, if you're doing the small bench, you'll have two of these. Uh, if you're going to do a long one, I didn't want to have that far of a span. I didn't want to. Nothing worse than working on a bench and have it not be solid. Uh, so I'm going to do three. So I made an extra one. So let's go ahead and glue these up and we'll cut the bird's mouths, bird, bird's mouth there after these are done in, with one unit so that they're all, they're nice and done properly here. So that's the plan anyway. We'll see. glue those together. All right, I think that's it for today. What time is it? Five o'clock, supper time in an hour. So we'll let that glue dry on those braces and we'll, uh, we'll pick up tomorrow. Hopefully, Lord willing, there's gonna be a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff getting done. We can see something actually take shape. Man, when it comes to gluing stuff up, I'm like a three-year-old with finger paints. I make, a, I make the biggest mess and I guess I haven't done a lot of gluing, so I guess I have a lot, a lot to learn about it. But uh, some, you know, I when I don't use enough, you know, I get guys get on me. Oh, you didn't use enough, and when I use too much, they get on me. How wasteful I am! And someday I'll find that that perfect middle ground. But uh, I have no doubt that enough glue <laughs> was used was used this time. All right. So these are our supports. Look how strong those are going to be. Doubled up, the two by sixes. So uh, let's clean this glue up here, trim the edges, and, and get everything ready to go. Oh, I got a little, I clamped too hard there and put a dent in it. That's not very nice. All right, let's get some of that glue cleaned off there. Boy, this is a good job for the moral, Mora chisel. You know, maybe. 
maybe do a hand plane. Is that, is that a, is that a good solution there? Might be. Oh yeah, that's the. I gotta learn to clamp my stuff tighter every time I. I guess I don't know why I'm so afraid to clamp stuff. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Nothing like a sharp plane. There's just nothing like it. This side's not going to go so well. Boy, okay, lesson learned. So next time, clean the glue off when it's wet. Good grief, I should have known better. One more to go. Yep, definitely clean your glue off when it's wet. But the plane actually. Works pretty, pretty good. I think the plane is my favorite tool to use. It really is, it really is delightful. So is the brace, brace and bit. Did I get that right? I get in trouble when I don't use the right terminology. There we go. So that worked out pretty good. So I just, just paper thin, this shave that saved me a lot of trouble. So, and that was actually probably just as well. That way we got some, I ran all the braces through there and, and made them all, they're all consistent now. Because I cut from two sides, I got just the tiniest lip, lip right there. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just knock that down. Delightful. Oh, that's nice. What's wrong with that? That's really, that's really nice. Let's do the, the other ones are suffering from the same lip there. Braces are just a, I don't know what I lost. Maybe took a sixteenth off or less, but that's all right. Really is uh, nice, even though the shop's not done yet. Uh, just coming in here is so different than it used to be. It's so much warmer, and then when you open the door, you're greeted with this wonderful smell of fresh wood instead of mildew and. Moisture. That's beautiful. Look at that. Didn't those turn out great? That looks great. So, of course, things are a little mismatched now. So let's we'll take these over to the miter saw and we'll cut these all. Just shave a little bit off there. Make them all the same. One trick I use to to get consistency when I have repetitive cuts like this is to use these stabilizers. As a, as kind of a stop. They've got a little, they got a little uh, arm, little bracket on there that you can raise, as kind of a stop, and that way I can set my first cut. It's a little bit low right there, and then uh, push the other pieces right to the stop, and, uh, and it gets me pretty, really close. They're the same. I don't have to measure. That's what we want. So our primary goal with our bench is a couple things. We want it to be very strong, very sturdy, no flex in it. We can pound on it if we need to. 
oh, I want it to look nice. I want it to, you know, that's always the, that's always kind of my goal in doing things is, is the dimensions. And also I want to hide the fasteners. I want to, I don't want, when you look at it, you know, I don't want to see it. I want, I want to minimize as many screws as possible. Yeah, you can go down and buy Simpson brackets and you can screw everything together with those. But I, I really don't like that. I, I don't like the look of it. And, and there's, just, there's just better ways, in my opinion. If you don't have time, that's fine. But if you do, uh, something like this. So this is kind of a, I guess you'd just call it a modified bird's mouth here that I, that I did. And the, the theory here is that this fits on this ledger just like that. Now this will be screwed in from the back and put together as an assembly, but doesn't that look nice? Here's maybe a better angle for you that you can see there. So we've got, that sits on there very cleanly, very nicely. It uh, is, is touching right there against the, the plywood, so it has the strength there. It's touching against the ledger. And then a little bit of 5 8 flat on the bottom right there for just the aesthetics of the whole thing just looks really nice. So that, that's a strong because we're not going to be lifting on our bench. It's not typically what we're going to be doing. It's going to be the, a downward force. And this is where we really want our strength. So I'll show you how I cut that bird's mouth uh, using a table saw. So off the corner here, I laid out about five eighths of an inch is what I wanted to reveal. That that's looks, looks kind of nice right there. So to cut this bird's mouth on here using the table saw, I came up with this, this jig right here, which is just a scrap piece of plywood and a couple of two by fours on a 45, um, spaced it in there so that this fits in there, these in here tightly. I was trying to get consistency um, and to use this as a, as a guide um, to cut this with the table saw blade here. And it, I, I tried one by hand and I didn't have very good, very good luck with it. And so, uh, well, we'll I, this here seems to work pretty good. So I'll, let's put it up on the saw and I'll kind of show you how it works. It seemed to work pretty good. There's probably a better way to do this. So you can see here, now if you had a dado blade, a dado blade, if you don't know, it's a, it's a thick saw blade that you can cut three quarter inch or so. It depends on your saw and all that. Uh, lot, lot wide strips, that would be really nice to have. I don't have one of those. So we'll just kind of do this um, by hand and then uh, clean it up with a chisel. But you can see right there is we want to cut, we set the saw blade at an inch and a half the thickness of our ledger. And we're going to, look, let's just do it here. It'll all be easier to see, understand once we're doing it. That seems to work pretty good, pretty repeatable there. Let's go clean that out with a chisel. So that seems to be a, well, it, I guess that's one way to do it. Don't know if it's the best way, but just the way that you know, I, I like to do these things by hand, but I was kind of, you know, this is kind of the opposite of the, of the poor man's carpenter bench because that one I did all by hand. And maybe we should have this one by hand too, but I, 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 I just don't have time. I, I want to get the shop up and running. So 
we got to speed things along. But, you know, sometimes by the time you take the time you spend thinking about, you know, building, building the jig and all that stuff and setting up the tools, um, I, you know, I think the truth is I could, you could have had, it, had them all cut out by hand and done um, and, and moving on. I, I'll bet it's a push if I had to, if I, if I had to guess there. Thought I'd share with you a beautiful sunset uh, on the mountain to the north. Just glorious tonight. Just absolutely beautiful. So, boy, I thought we'd get further in there, but uh, just run out of time. There's so much to share. But um, this is always, whenever I do long projects like this, we're getting to the point now where um, a lot of people start getting fed up. Like, oh, you know, I don't want to see this anymore. And, and um, the only advice I could give you is, come back when we're done uh it's just this is real life and and uh it just takes a long time this stuff it's not the only thing i have going on but um jack's birthday today so uh, we're heading out knocked off a little bit early today to uh, we're going to take him out to dinner and and uh got some things planned for that 12 years old i just can't believe where what happened to all the time i know people always older people told me to enjoy every moment that it goes by quickly but um they were right they were absolutely right. So, you know, another thing that was on my mind today is, you know, just Mrs. W, she reads, has a lot of friends on Facebook and, and just how contentious things are uh, in this country and how divided everyone is. Um, and it seems like so much of it is centered around uh, politics, left, right, Republicans, Democrats and all that. And and, and I'm, I'm even sad to say that my own family extended family is is not has not been affected and touched by this as well uh, like like yours is and I was thinking about that as I was working today and and I'm I'm going to speak to Christians because you know I'm the nice thing about being a Christian is that we have um, we have uh, a standard we have uh, basically we have a rule book to life um, that is really nice it helps us to to not to be in error helps us to remain anchored uh, in truth and I you know, sometimes when I look at other atheists or agnostics that don't really have that, I, I feel sad for them because where you're just like a ship that's adrift, what do you latch onto? What do you have in life that's true, a constant? Because it's always shifting and changing, and it's, it's sad. Uh, it's scary, and um, I, you know, I've been there. Uh, I, I just don't like it. But um, I was thinking, um, I, I think it's wrong for us uh, to to really to get on the uh, social media or or to get on to Facebook and I'm as guilty as anyone else and and have these opinions with with without having all of the information and I'm speaking to you Christians and I'm speaking to myself as well you know we're told that that it's God who sets up kingdoms it's God who whose hand is in everything he's ultimately responsible for the affairs of men on this earth and whether that be having a hand in picking uh, Barack Obama for president or uh, Donald J. Trump for president, when we go as Christians online and, 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 and we rail against these, these men that, that we think are so unjust, are we not railing and fighting against God himself? You know, if he's ultimately responsible for this, then, you know, we, he, him having all the facts and not, we, us not having the facts, maybe we should look to our own affairs a little bit more and less to the affairs of things that, of which we don't have a lot of control. And I'll close this with, I think the story that sums it up so well in the Gospels is when uh, the very end, when uh, Christ is walking with uh, Peter. And uh, John is following behind, and, and Christ is giving Peter his directions and, and kind of laying out the blueprint for his future ministry. And things are getting a little uncomfortable for Peter, and was as was his custom, it was a very he kind of liked to change the change the subject, you know. And we all do that, don't we? When something comes up that hits a little too close to home, that we're a little bit uncomfortable with, the easiest thing is to change the subject and get the heat off of, get the get ourselves out of the hot seat. Well, he's certainly on the hot seat at this moment, and then he looks back and points to, to John and says, "Well, what about this guy here? You know, what you telling me all these things, and you know, what about what's his, what's his, what do you got for him?" 
And Christ looks at him and he says something that was just so important. He's like, what's that to you? That's, you follow me. Or what is that to thee? Thou followest me, as the King James puts it so eloquently. And I think that that's, um, I think that's, uh, I think that's an, ad, an admonition um, to us Christians, is, is what is that to thee? The great affairs of men and of kings and presidents and prime ministers. Do we not have enough to look to um, with our own affairs and our own family? So, but who knows? All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.